day of Pentecost is built on a Jewish feast day of Sukkot, which is a harvest festival. It is one of the three great feast days of the Jewish faith. And therefore, there would have been great crowds in Jerusalem come to celebrate this. <coughs> And it is a moment in Luke's telling of the story of, of critical importance in terms of the story of the Christian faith. Luke, of course, writes two of our books in the New Testament, his own gospel that carries his name, and the Acts of the Apostles. And from his point of view, this is a two-act play that we are a part of, you and I. And the first part begins with Jesus receiving the Holy Spirit in baptism from John the Baptist, and then that Spirit carrying him through his life and death and resurrection to his ascension. And the second book begins with the ascension itself, and after the ascension, the disciples return to Jerusalem and they elect someone to take Judas Iscariot's place, Matthias, and Peter preaches for the first time to those who are gathered there as the followers of Jesus. We're told that that's 120 people. So when we think of this Pentecost morning, we can think of it as being a crowd of 120 of Jesus' followers, early followers, or at least interested people gathered around that core of 12 who are the heart of his community. And while they are gathered on this sunny Pentecost morning, there is the sound of a mighty wind. <coughs> For Luke, this is a moment of recreation. That is, the wind which blows at this event is the same wind which blew in Genesis as God was creating the world. The wind blew over the face of the waters. And in this moment, Luke wants us to know this is that significant. God is creating something new in creation of that magnitude. And then there are reported to be tongues of flame alighting on all those who are gathered. 120 people <coughs> sitting around with flames on their heads. It's a great image. It comes from John the Baptist's forecast that he will, he is baptizing for the forgiveness of sins, but one who is mightier than he is coming, who will baptize them with fire. And this is the fire that is coming. And then they are given this gift of being able to speak multiple languages. There are people who live in Jerusalem from all over the place. All those countries' names that are in that passage that we heard, stretching for a thousand miles from, from Libya to Iran to Italy and Egypt, in terms of our own countries. That whole eastern Mediterranean area is represented in those names. And they are people who, some of whom are probably there for, as pilgrims for the feast, but more likely they are many people who live in Jerusalem and have come from those countries. And the gift that's given is that all of a sudden they are able to hear the good news spoken in their own native tongue. Can imagine how surprising that must have been. Here they are in Jerusalem, where they probably have 
do not get to hear their native tongue much, and suddenly they say, listen to that, <coughs> they're speaking my language. And it affects people from all those countries. And the end of the story, at least the end of this part of the story, after Peter's sermon, is that a whole lot of them, 3,000 we're told, believe that what is preached and are baptized and become Christians. And then they go home. And then the church spreads to the end of the earth. So this is the moment for Luke when the church is planted in one place in a way that it can then spread to the ends of the earth and spread all the way to Cranston, Rhode Island. It's, it's that kind of seminal moment. So on, on Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate this spirit. We celebrate this spirit as, <coughs> as it has come to each of us individually in our lives. Jean read that nice lesson that wasn't printed, which talks about how that spirit comes to, in various ways to individuals with various gifts. You know how that spirit has come into your life and how, how the inexplicable spirit of God has moved you, touched you, shaped who you are, and we celebrate that that is true for all of us. All of us have been touched by that spirit. And we celebrate that that same spirit has empowered the church to the ends of the earth and has empowered this people here in this part of the church to be brave and do new things and to carry on many meaningful ministry in this place. And so we celebrate that Holy Spirit alive in our own lives and in our church community. Yesterday was PBD Fest down and if you read today's progel, you will think that two things happened. One is that, that somebody <coughs> fired a gun late in the day, at night, and everybody got scared and ran away and they didn't find out who did it. You will think that's one thing that happened. And the other thing you will think is that there's a man who ate, I don't know, 5,800 pretzels or something. <laughs> <laughs> and won the pretzel contest. And that's what the journal has to say about what happened yesterday. So I will tell you another part of the story, which is that yesterday was also World Refugee Day. And World Refugee Day was celebrated as an adjunct to BBD Fest in Burnside Park in downtown. And there were Lots of cool things. There were refugees selling goods and there was lots of international music. But at the heart of what it was, was this small little stage set up. And in front of it, there were 22 chairs. And on the stage, there was a federal judge in his long black robe and <coughs> Senator Reed and Mayor. And they were all gathered to swear in these 22 people as new citizens of the United States. And these people came from 14 different countries. And they came from all over the place. They came from South Korea and China and Haiti and Colombia and Ukraine. A lot of them. And there was beautiful music sung by this great singer who sang God Bless America and the National Anthem and all those things. 
And there was a lovely speech given by the judge himself, who talked about the spirit of what they were doing. And that what they were aligning themselves with was a vision and a hope for this country. That all that we say we are, we will be. That this is a place where equality for the law is, is the dream, is the hope that draws us on. Where we can believe what we want to believe, and we can love who we want to love, and can say pretty much what we want to say. And that we can live together in community. And he said, that's, that's what you all have given so much time and effort to in making this commitment today. And of course, the whole thing took so much more poignancy today because of the assault on immigration that's been carried on in the last few years by this administration. And then one by one, these people were brought up from Haiti and Colombia and China and South Korea to get their certificate of citizenship. The very things that he pointed out were the driving force in their hearts, were holy things. They were, they were dreams of the Holy Spirit. They were, they were things that God would do. <coughs> and, and so in the midst of this crazy festival, there was this moment when there were these 22 people who were living and being touched by a spirit which was itself holy. And, and I think those of us who were gathered around cheered, were touched by that spirit as well. As well. It was certainly the most patriotic that I have felt in a very long time. It was a time when you could see that the, that the values and hopes of our nation are going on, carried on by 22 people of color from around the world. And that's where the hope of our nation lies. And that's what God is doing in our nation. These are days that are very difficult in our nation's life. There are times of divisiveness and racism and anti-immigrant policies. And yet, in the midst of all that, God is at work. God is doing God's work in that kind of event. And, and so today, when we celebrate Pentecost, we celebrate it, of course, because we've been touched by that spirit, and we feel empowered by the spirit of God, and because of that spirit has, has given birth to this great church and to all the good things that grow out of that, but we celebrate as well that no matter who we are, or no matter what happens to our community, God is at work in this nation, in the world doing the work that God wants to have done. And that is a greater Pentecost than the one we celebrate this morning. That is a Pentecost whose faith has ultimate hope for all the world. 